Hello, my name is Jujun, and welcome back to World of Tanks. Today, I'm playing in the IS-6 on Fury Salient, Prokhorovka, Reskin, blah blah blah. But, as you can tell from the left and the right side of the screen, the matchup is quite ludicrous indeed for several reasons. I'm an IS-6 as a T-44 on the enemy team. We are the only Tier 8s as a Tiger P on our team and a Stura Mill on their team. Those are the only Tier 7s and the rest are tier 6, with the exception of the T-28 and the SU-85B who've platooned with a 5916, which gets scout matchmaking. Additionally, there are no artillery pieces on the enemy team or on our team, making this a very very strong game for me. Uh, the cards have been laid, and all I have to do is take the gauntlet and try and do my best. So, the IS-6, I've only just purchased this vehicle, it's quite an old premium now, um, but it is a very good premium from what the limited amount of games I've played. I've played about 20 games in this vehicle so far, and this certainly is my best one. That's all I'm going to say. Two ricochets there, the frontal armour and the side armour, incredible. Pretty incredible. It is, I believe, 150 millimeters on the front of the turret and 100 on the upper plate everywhere. But the upper plate is angled back at an incredible angle, I believe maybe even 60 degree angle. It isn't completely impervious, however. First kill there on the M6, quite simple. Uh, even though it was at 300 meters plus range, blind shot into the Hellcat there. Get spotted again, doesn't matter. Armour at range is much more effective obviously, and fighting against tier 6s, 1 tier 7, 1 tier 8, I'm not too worried at all. Although later on you will see the armour come into more effect. Can we kill that Hellcat? He's only on 175 hit points and he's over 400 meters away, but you know, Soviet bias. <laughs> Russian bias, Soviet bias. Rushing forward here to kill the T-37. 396 damage, just over the average for this gun. 122mm Soviet guns, 390 average damage, 175 penetration. Probably the weakest aspect of the tank is its penetration, but for this matchup, I have predominantly AP and 9 rounds of APCR with 2 HE. We're going to need them, is all I say. Hellcat there, unfortunately for him, he's stock. Only 550 hit points. And we just take off, well, let's say about 80% of that in one shot. Almost reloaded. And good night. That's 135 more damage on top, and we're up to 4 kills with 1934 damage that we've seen. Take another bounce from, I believe, the T-150. Now we're aiming for the Stura Mill. Quite a long aim time, as you can tell, with a 3.3 second aim time. 3.2 second aim time, I believe, with my crew. I'm training my ST-1 crew in this vehicle at the moment. Onwards towards the IS-4. Another very strong Soviet tank. But yes, the armour angling of this vehicle is quite incredible. The side armour is very good for side scraping. And, like I said, the gun's penetration is pretty low, but in this matchup against tier 6 heavy tanks, tier 6 mediums, and very lightly armoured tier 7 tank destroyers, there is no problem at all. Pick up our fifth kill of the game. Now, this is Prokhorovka Encounter, and our cap circle, or rather the cap circle, is in danger. We take a shot from an unknown enemy on top of the hill. Gun depression is a little low, but we can get a good side shot into that Jagdpanzer 4. And the other Jagdpanzer 4 who was shooting at us puts three shots into us, and the third one takes our tracks off. We bounce his fourth. We just hit his armour, taking off 455 hit points. Another shot in. Completely ineffective fire. I believe he has 145 penetration with standard armor piercing. Even though this armor is only 100 millimeters thick, like I said, the angling is pretty damn special. 
Churchill, however, manages to penetrate us. Take a shot in the side, put one in there. And we're just bouncing many shots. Now, if I was angling like this, just penetrate right here, because the armour is much flatter. We do take some damage at this point in the game. We're under fire from the left and the right. I decide to take out the target on the right, thus securing my flank. However, the base is being capped by at least two enemies. Uh, well, in fact, two enemies. And here comes the multitude of fire. I cannot see them, even with a good crew. This vehicle has very poor view range, 350 meters at stock. We're getting tracked, we're getting hit by high explosive fire. But, as you can see, the frontal armor of this vehicle is pretty incredible against these tier 6 opponents. And possibly the T-44, we haven't actually seen them for a while. The high explosive is getting quite annoying and we are taking damage. But, the enemy is doing what they can to delay me into getting to the cap. And unfortunately for me, they're outside my view range and I don't have um, any optics, code optics, or secondly, binoculars. We only have 11 seconds left on the cap. There's the Cromwell. Luckily for me, I load an APCR round, aim for about a second and a half, and it flies into his drive wheel. A bit of RNG luck for us there. A lot of RNG luck for this game in total. Jagdpanzer 4, we dealt with the previous one. Quite weak armor, especially for APCR rounds. Although, the APCR rounds on this gun are quite weak at 217 penetration. But, like I said, tier 6 opponents. Well, they're not going to cause us too many problems. All we need to do is get in that cap and hopefully not get detracted anymore. T-150 just over this rise. Can't quite see him. But my priority is getting in the cap with 3 seconds on the clock left. We penetrate him and set him on fire. Oh yes. We now turn our attention to the Cromwell that is trying to make a flanking maneuver. Good on him. However, my reload is 9.87 seconds. I believe he thought it may have been around 12. Now in hindsight, this T-150 was only on 3 hit points. I should have random, rather than firing one of my precious APCR into him. Luckily for me, we see a glimpse of the T-44 over there and, and he's only on 204 hit points. We're on 10 kills, 6,000 damage almost, and now it's just one versus one. Now that T-44 being the other tier 8 in this matchup, has had a very good game himself, 7 kills. That is exceptionally good. But, being a tier 8, you're going to have to be quite dominant in this game if you're presented with an opportunity like this. Now, bearing that in mind, this type of matchup is very very rare indeed. I think I've only experienced this once, or maybe twice before, and the fact that there's no artillery makes this moment of gameplay even more precious. <laughs> Fortunately, I waste my shot there. However, he bounces fruitlessly on me. He has to hit me twice in order to kill me. And again, we're very unlucky, especially with the APCR to not penetrate his side. I believe it may have hit just slightly above or maybe into the tracks. Luckily for me, he's backed up. He fires, bounces, and he flattens his upper plate for me, and we penetrate him, securing 11 kills and 6,186 damage that we can see. Well, I had a very, very good game, and that's because of the matchup. No artillery, tier 6 opponents, 1 tier 7 and 8. And a very, very well armored tank. So, the only thing left to do is to take a look at the post game stats. So, as the title says, the most ridiculous of matchups. I couldn't think of any better title, so that's what I put. A mastery badge, hand of god, bruiser, duelist, fire for effect, shell proof, 166,000 credits received and 3,025 experience. Premium account, but not times two first one of the day. 
A pools medal. Cool headed, defender, steel wall, tank, sniper, tanker, sniper. High caliber and top gun. Fortunately for me, I didn't get a color balance medal as I did have the SU 85B before um, uh, being left alone against those opponents. So that's unfortunate, but never mind. In terms of damage, uh, 6,581 in total. And if you can see the rest of our team, 1665 from a tier 6 uh, medium or heavy. I can't actually remember if the VK3000 is a heavy or a medium. It doesn't matter. Yeah, well, that's kind of not really that unexpected considering I did get 11 kills and I was a tier 8 heavy tank. The T44 also gained 3,800 damage and 7 kills, base experience of 1,294, 1,839, I would say well played, but the matchup basically gave us tanks on a silver platter. Um, in terms of my own shots, 27 fired, whoops, 24 hits and 22 penetrations, slight inaccuracy, slight rush shots in some circumstances, but of the ones that did hit, most of them did penetrate. 6,500 damage, as I said, some of which were more than 300 meters away. Very strong Soviet snipers, these tanks. <laughs> 65 hits received, 12 penetrated, and 53 ricocheted, with a total damage blocked of 8,425. That's pretty special, but it would be more special if the matchup was a bit more harder for me and that T44. 5 vehicles spotted, 12 damaged, 11 destroyed. Four and a half, um, sorry, 457 assistance damage, 100 defense points, and 2 kilometers traveled. Profit wise, we spent a lot on ammunition because of those APCR rounds and generally just firing all the other AP rounds. So we had to spend 57,000 in credits, 6,000 in repairs, and 3,000 on our tracks. Or rather, the ammo. But we still gained 99,000 in profit, and that's why people play tier 8 uh, premium heavies and mediums. It was a reasonably long game, with 9 minutes, and our experience there, as you can see. So, the IS 6 is a very good tank <laughs> in the right circumstance. Of course it is a older premium and I believe it does have premium matchmaking which means it will never encounter tier 10s. Much like the 112, both of those tanks have both of these tanks have very poor penetration with 175 with their standard AP. Difference between the IS6 and the 112 obviously. The 112 has heat with 250 as its premium, but I must say even though I've played less games in this vehicle, I prefer it already. And I probably should have bought one before the 112. So, I would say good game, but like I said, it was basically a lot of tanks on a silver platter for this tier 8 behemoth. So, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave it a like, maybe share it, and tell me what you thought. As always, I've been Jujin, and I'll see you, chaps and chapettes. In the next one.